Welcome back for another Q&A. If I missed your question, please leave it down below or wait about a month for the next one. If you guys do want to support the channel, make sure to sign up for the newsletter at frank stefanocom but let's jump right in. I'm getting depressed because of everything that's going on and how everyone is just a sheep. How do you deal with this BS? I completely ignore it and if I didn't have YouTube, I wouldn't watch TV, I wouldn't look at the news, I wouldn't do any of it at all. You have to ignore everything because it's all negative, nonsense information to keep you in a fearful mind state. You know, for me it does help to have the goal of helping people improve their health, whether that be through my businesses, through the YouTube channel, and that's what I try to stay focused on. But regardless, you know, it has to be something positive and hopefully something that makes you happy. Otherwise, you kind of have to force yourself to be happy with whatever you're doing and maintain like a happy emotional state, which is difficult to do in our modern context. What harm do contraceptives do to a woman's body? Pill, IUD. And if you actually look online for any of the negatives about these things, they're very difficult to find. You know, Big Pharma has certainly taken over all of the search engines. When you take birth control, you're consistently taking estrogen as opposed to the body's natural cycles. The adrenals and ovaries get underused. It lowers testosterone. Although women have small amounts of testosterone, it's crucial. You need it for the maintenance of tissue, bone mass, and reasonable human behavior. You know, we see women that take too much estrogen have all these crazy mood swings. And I'm unaware of anyone speaking truthfully about birth control, IUD, contraceptives, but I'm sure someone has written a book and there are plenty of ladies that will likely comment down below that can give you the general negatives of IUD. But if you look even a reasonable amount, you'll hear plenty of horror stories about you know, IUD copper making women go crazy, nightmare medical stories. What is your favorite Pixar film? Also, do you feel like chemtrails get into our food system and on organic crops? Also, do you ever feel like GMOs will be a thing of the past? I've actually only seen the Toy Story movie when I was a kid, uh, the first one, and I even played a video game that I think was for the Nintendo 64 Toy Story, uh, so that's really it. I think the primary purpose of chemtrails is weather modification because they're already dumping stuff directly into our food and water. You know, the water treatment plants literally have bags of chemicals they're pouring into your safe tap water. And it seems like GMOs are just going to be more and more common moving forward as the modern media has done an excellent job of brainwashing people that meat is bad, meat destroys the environment. Whereas when you have animals in a natural ecosystem, such as cows eating grass, it's actually good for the environment, but there's way too many lies and the climate agenda is definitely at the forefront of the new world order. Will you ever start selling Frankie's free range mayonnaise? And since this is a female, I know it's not some type of fairy boy butter joke. Uh, in the future, I do hope to be making a variety of prepared foods and value added products. I mean, I could honestly probably make mayonnaise next week and sell it but I wouldn't have access to the highest quality ingredients and it would be impractical from a production standpoint. You know, also if people did want truly high quality mayonnaise, you can't even really get proper eggs right now. So I think that's the first step. What are your thoughts on traditional Chinese medicine? Also, what do you recommend for fast weight loss now that you're no longer carnivore? You know, Chinese medicine, like any practice, you know, you have people at the top, people at the bottom, there's plenty of truths, there's plenty of lies, and I'm sure there's elite people and secret society members that are using those expert Chinese medicine practitioners. It's not just about herbs and roots. You know, there's meditation, there's exercise, there's many aspects to it, and you can use your own understanding of health and nutrition to gauge, you know, what can work, what is actually truthful. And I'm sure once you look at Chinese medicine in depth, and then you say, hey, they do talk about water quality, sun, food, exercise, being out in nature, all that type of stuff. For weight loss, the two main things I suggest people do are increase the amount of animal foods in their diet and reduce environmental radiation and everything usually falls into place. People develop their ideal body composition. My brother-in-law told me about persistent organic pollutants, POPs, which are collected in fat apparently. 
was wondering if you know anything about this. Uh, so I made a video about toxins in fish if you want a brief overview of different types of pollutants, but the average person has to remove as many negatives from their diet, their lifestyle as possible in order to detox pollutants that have been in the food and water they've been consuming for many years. You know, this involves going organic, drinking glass bottled mineral water, reducing environmental radiation. Leaky gut, best supplements, leaky brain, best supplements, remyelination, best supplements, supplements for deeper sleep, or foods that will help in the above regard. So it's those things I already mentioned, you know, reducing the environmental radiation, increasing the quality animal foods, when in this case, you really wanna make sure to eliminate bad gut bacteria. And in order to do that, you have to take digestive enzymes to ensure that the food is broken down so that bad bacteria cannot eat it. And then you wanna consume a high quality probiotic, such as water kefir or dairy kefir, even local yogurt, as long as it's made properly with the right strains to keep that bad bacteria at bay. Are you not concerned about specific strains of bacteria in your kefir that produce histamine and other biogenic amines, such as lactobacillus cassii? Uh, so this is an overcomplication of gut bacteria. You know, if I've experimented with histamine versus non-histamine producing strains, isolating them, taking them in large and small amounts, and the overarching factor is what we just mentioned. Make sure there is no undigested food and plenty of good gut bacteria uh, through the enzymes, through the probiotics, mainly kefir. I also want to hear about your progress with your farm and slaughterhouse and the most significant obstacles you face right now. Stay strong, buddy. Uh, thanks. So this is quite a bit to talk about. So I'll just go over everything tomorrow in the Frankie's Free Range Meat blog. So uh, be sure to check that out, guys. Why did you start eating gluten again as your choice of carbs instead of other options out there? Uh, so I can't keep my diet calorically dense enough without incorporating the cookies and the sugar. And I just have no energy and I lose too much weight. Gluten also tends to get a bad rap when in reality the problem is what's being sprayed on those grains. You recently said bananas are one of the worst fruits on the gut. Given so many eat so many bananas, could you please explain? Uh, so bananas, like most plant foods, have anti-nutrients in relatively small amounts. However, they're incredibly high in saponins, which drastically increase leaky gut, and a few other anti-nutrients, which I could probably make a whole video on. Most people don't have severe gut issues, so they can eat bananas, but people like me with compromised gut function immediately see problems. I was eating bananas, and I was trying to figure out why I was getting such bad acne, uh, so I was looking up those anti-nutrients and what could be in them. Lo and behold, there's a reason. When will you hit 100K? Uh, so we've been over and under 100,000 subscribers for quite a while now. I can't remember when it first started, but I think for at least six months at this point. Have your views on weight gain changed over the course of your journey? Is it simply seco food quality? Is keto the best way? Uh, so organ function and reduction of that environmental radiation are the first, and it can be hard to fix those things after years of imbalanced diet and use of pharmaceutical drugs. Hormones are certainly important, especially more so in males with low testosterone. Generally speaking, you fix everything I've mentioned so far, including the testosterone, and you exercise, you should be able to gain weight. Did you take antibiotics after your surgeries or natural alternatives? Uh, so they prescribed me antibiotics. I had the two jaw surgeries and the gynecomastia surgery. I did not take them. Uh, the first jaw surgery, I just rinse my mouth out with water, the gynecomastia surgery, I didn't do anything. And the second jaw surgery, I was rinsing my mouth out with iodine just because it was kind of grossing me out more than the first time. How are European ancestors ate specific food for a different ethnic group? Is it true that some people should eat more of certain food because of their ancestral eating pattern? Uh, so what you wanna actually look at is the macronutrient ratios more so than the specific foods. You know, then you can fill those macronutrient ratios with high quality food and you should feel good. You know, a six foot five Nordic person is going to need substantially more protein than a five foot eight Italian. But, you know, if, you know, that five foot eight Italian did eat like that Nordic person, their children should be much taller, much more physically developed. Uh, whereas in most cases now the nutrition is quickly sucked up by the prenatal periods, the developmental stages, and it's usually not even enough. Any tricks or suggestions for stubborn love handles or back fat? 
I reduce my body fat down to 10% where I can see my six pack, but the love handles do not want to go away. Uh, so we mentioned everything that can be done here for the most part. Uh, low testosterone and insulin resistance can mostly be fixed by incorporating more animal foods into your diet and reducing environmental radiation. Also, you know, consuming animal testicles like the goat or lamb testicles we have on Frankie's free range meat will give you the bioactive testosterone. And if you eat those and you feel a difference, you know that low testosterone is a factor. Is there some truth to the conventional push for a more alkaline body? It seems like everything acidic is declared bad. Yet, for example, many healthy bacteria thrive in acidic environment. Different parts of the body are supposed to have a certain pH. You know, the stomach is always supposed to be acidic. The blood is always alkaline. Attempting to change this is impossible and will only result in problems. It's just like a blanket statement for people trying to sell you products. Oh, this makes your body more alkaline. It's people trying to sound smart without actually understanding nutrition. And that's mostly because the product they're selling doesn't actually do anything. So they have to make up something that it does. What's that layer of fat between a woman's navel and her pubic bone? Is it to protect the reproductive organs or is it a sign of chronic gut inflammation? Uh, so women do have increased fat storage in general in certain areas, especially that one for you know reasons such as protect the reproductive organs as well as store nutrients for a potential pregnancy. But as with any fat stores, when the body becomes inflamed, unhealthy, insulin resistance, they can grow rapidly and become unesthetic and unnatural. What I mentioned earlier so far, you know, with the love handles, balancing hormones, reducing EMF, increasing dietary animal protein are what most women have to do that are having any sort of body composition issues. Thoughts on testosterone replacement therapy for older gentlemen looking to feel like they're in their 30s again. I'm 18, but I've heard both positives and negatives of TRT. Uh, so I sound like a broken record here, but go to frankiesherangemeat.com, purchase the goat or sheep testicles. They contain the bioactive testosterone and it is natural. You should notice an immediate difference. Can you talk about how you learned you had too much iron so other of us carnivores can be careful? Thank you. I think I have a playlist on iron overload. If I don't, just search for iron on my channel. What to do to help my body fight an infection? Uh, we have another video. I think I titled it, How to Boost Your Immune System. That was earlier last year. I have a chronic illness that might be related to low selenium. Beyond eating a few Brazil nuts a day, is there anything I can do to increase its absorption? Uh, so this is a textbook example of why I tell people to supplement instead of consuming foods. You know, get a selenium supplement, whether from organsupplements.com or elsewhere, and take it for a week or two instead of playing guessing games. You, know, you might not be digesting the selenium in those Brazil nuts at all. Does water kefir taste sweet? Uh, the carbonation and the fruit flavorings might seem sweet, but there's also a possibility that the sugar isn't completely digested by bacteria. What I like to do is use the tip of my tongue to gauge if it's sugar or just like the carbonation sensation on my tongue. What micronutrients fix oily skin and pimples? Is it too low iodine or why do some people get pimples after puberty from food? How to fix the root cause and not just, you know, don't eat foods like raw milk. So it has to do with leaky gut and not enough beneficial bacteria. Certain nutrients can act as band-aids, but until liver and gut function is fixed, you will always have acne. Most of the time it tends to be, you know, a lack of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years of sun exposure, vitamin D3, and that can be a big first step for some people. What should we eat if we don't have organic plants or grass-fed animal options for buying in our country? Thanks. Uh, well, I would speak to the farmers or wherever you purchase food from to see what they're actually feeding the animals and what they're actually spraying on the crops and try to make decisions based on what you have access to. Chances are there's some type of meat, some type of grain, some type of foods that are not being sprayed. You know, they're being grown in a natural environment. So thank you guys for joining me today. I know I didn't really get to go in depth on most of these, but you know, maybe next time I'll try focusing on a fewer amount of questions. The things I've mentioned throughout this video can be found on frank stefanocom from Frankie's Range Meats, Foods, Oregon Supplements, Wi-Fi Shielding, Frankie's Naturals. Check everything out. Uh, see if there's something you'd like to try out, and chances are 
there's an explanation for each of those products somewhere on my channel. Uh, so thanks again for joining me, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video. Thank <music> you.